Greetings ladies and gentlemen class, welcome to the Bahrain F124 track guide and setup. So quick thank you to all the channel subscribers and especially our channel members as well over here and in Patreon. Thank you for your support. Now let's get into the track guide first followed by the setup and then the full speed uh, lap if you want to watch it at the end. So at the 100 meter board this is where you set up your lap just after it or around the 75 meter Break hard in a straight line and then trail into the apex here. Run wide on the exit, use as much curb as possible to maximize your exit speed. And then turn on DRS, sit to the middle of the track here because there's a little bit of a bump if you take the left hand line sometimes. And uh, there you go. And now heading into turn one, right at the curb here, just after the curb, that's where you're going to be breaking around 120 or 110 meters. Break hard in a straight line and trail break into the corner here. Avoid the right hand sausage. Keep it to the middle of the track and then point the car towards the curb. Take it as much as you can. Uh, be careful in fourth year, sometimes it spins you out. On the exit, use as much curb as possible. Open up DRS and now bring your car all the way to the left hand side and be ready to break right after the 100 meter and just before the start of the curb in front of you. Take it in third or fourth gear and let the car run wide on the exit once again to maximize your exit speed. And be careful with the curb usage here, it can cause you oversteer and will spin. And now heading into this uh, left right part and it goes downhill. So line your car with the white line here to be somewhere in the middle and then avoid the curbs on the right hand side which is to come. Uh, that can spin your car very easy, it's pretty much an auto spin sometimes. You may need to take a downshift sometimes here and then for the next braking zone there's three blue colored zones here i break right after the the light blue the third one or the black barrier on the right hand side straight line braking and then trail into the corner and on the exit the sooner you can straighten out your car the better it is and you can use a lot of the curb here for the next part turn 9 and 10 bring your car all the way to the right hand side here and aim for the curb on the right side uh, uh, the next right hand curb here break in a straight line and then take it in third or second and there you go use the curb on the exit it has grip for some reason and now heading into the fast left hander here break at the blue patch on the right that's about 75 meters and uh, take it in fourth gear or fifth gear whichever you prefer uh, we take a little too much curb here and we get a little unsettled but Nevertheless, we carry some good speed and avoid taking that right hand curb here uh, unless you have a very high right hand or you know, you're running 60 FPS. Uh, so, and let your car run right on to the left hand side here and you're going to be braking right around here and you can see on the right hand there's an orange barrier. So around here is your braking spot. You don't have to brake heavy, you just need to carry about 20-30% brake, sometimes 40 or 50%. And then Take the entry curb a little bit and take a lot of the exit curb, maximize your speed. Bring the car back as much as possible to the left hand side and again right at the white line detection, DRS detection line or the 100 meter line or the curb, that's where you're going to be thinking about braking. Tuck the car in as tight as you can on the entry and on the exit let it run wide and there you go. That is a lap around Bahrain. I hope you enjoy this now let's get into the setup for Bahrain um, surprise surprise it's gonna be very high downforce as you'll see in a moment here and uh, give it a go and if you need any help I'll leave it in the comments so let's take a look at the setup for Bahrain um, well 50 43 wings that's quite high for Bahrain uh, but you're gonna be needing all the downforce here especially for the slow speeds here Try it out, you can definitely gain a lot of time. If you need more top speed, just drop the revving by two or three clicks and that will be good. If you need to adjust the stability with that, reduce the front wing as well. 100, 10, 100, that's pretty much the norm, the meta to go for the suspension geometry. You can reduce the on throttle a little bit to around 80 or 90 to give you a little bit more rotation in higher speed. Uh, high on throttle gives you better traction in slow speed, um, out of happiness especially. 
Off throttle, you can keep it at 10%. That's pretty much the way to go. You can increase it a little bit, maybe do 20 or 30 if you really need it. Uh, when I say you really need it, it's in the case where you're already at 57 brake bias and you're still locking up the rear, you could try increasing the off throttle, maybe 20 or 30. 100% engine braking. And then uh, we head into the suspension geometry. Hun uh, not 100%, uh, all the way to the left, maybe a little bit of rear toe if you need a little bit of stability coming out of the slower corners. Right, that's the easy part. Now comes the suspension. Um, uh, all right, so for, oh yeah, I forgot. So suspension geometry, just keep it all the way to the left. Uh, otherwise, there's no, no point of changing it. Suspension, 41.1 suspension is the way to go. Uh, stiff front, soft rear. Uh, same thing for the anti-roll bars, but you want to keep the rear anti-roll bar relatively stiff. So around 15, 16 is what I found to be good. You can increase the uh, anti-roll bar on the rear a little bit. So if you go higher, it's going to cause more oversteer, allows the car to rotate more, but you know it's going to get oversteery. Right? If you can handle it, go for it. If you want a little bit more stability, you can always go down to about... I know maybe from 15 you can go down to 14 13 or even 12 you know those are the good ranges where you want to be right and then for the right height I'm keeping it quite low to the ground here this is pretty much I what I found to be the best compromise around here but you have to be careful with the curb usage if you want to take a lot more curbs then you can raise the right height on the rate to about 55 60 60 is the maximum I'd say uh, any more than that you're going to be losing rear traction around here which is quite important and yeah maybe a little bit of front right hand if you need to clear the curbs a little bit more otherwise that's pretty good and for the brakes 100 percent brake pressure as always 56 55 or 57 brake bias works well uh, higher is better for heavy braking lower is better for light braking so into the middle sector if you just need to tap the brakes that's good to use and finally, tire pressures, maximum tire pressures for the race is pretty much <laughs> the way to go, right? There's no other way around it this year. You can use a little bit lower tire pressure, maybe 2 PSI lower overall, all tires. Uh, that will be helpful for qualifying, gives you a lot more grip and allows your tires to heat up a little bit quicker as well. So if you need some more grip, some more tire temperature early on try that otherwise you can use maximum tire pressures in qualifying as well now that's all hope you enjoy this let's get into the full uh, full uh, full lap and hope you enjoy this i will see you in the next track guide and setup in jeddah take care everyone stay safe and goodbye